Decision for Life. Welcome to First Baptist Church Indian Trail. Glad to have those of you that are worshiping with us uh, through live stream. Uh, you know, I told you back in March that live stream would be just as good as being right here to watch us. But it's not true. It's just better to be here and to worship and to just to be reunited with our friends and thank you. And we're glad that you're all here. We really are, live stream and here. We're really grateful. And uh, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Isn't that a great song? I, I sat there and just soaked that all up and just grateful for uh, the leadership of the Lord Jesus in our hearts and our lives. Now that's really what the message is all about today. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that there are many of you that are probably here this morning, many of you that are watching through live stream, uh, television, and other means, you're faced with the crossroads in your life right now. You really are looking for some uh, direction in your life. You're looking for some clarity in your life. Uh, you've got a decision that you've got to make. Maybe it's, you know... You're offered a new job out of town somewhere. You're trying to decide whether you're going to make that or not. And then maybe you've come from the doctor and heard that big C word that nobody wants to hear. You don't know what to do about that. Maybe you're deciding on what university that you think that God is leading you to next year. You've got all kinds of decisions to make. You're really here trying to figure out, what am I supposed to do? Life is filled with decisions. Uh, you make the right decisions, success is around the corner. You make the wrong decision, then you're not being very successful. I, I was riding down the road uh, this week, and I, and I really had about, I had about 90% of the message finished, or maybe 95, somewhere along in there, and I, I just didn't have a good introduction. I, I wanted something, uh, and, I, and I listened to this, and, and I'll be truthful. Uh, I was guilty pleasuring radio station that I was listening to. And uh, the words of that song grabbed my heart. And I thought, okay, there's what I want to use. And so I, I, I got the lyrics and here's what it says. And let me get to it. I've had choices since the day that I was born. There were voices that told me right from wrong. If I had listened, no, I wouldn't be here today. Living and dying with the choices that I have made. Now, some of you are here this morning and you're, you're thinking this verse 3 that we're looking at. I hope you got your Bibles. Look with me. Um, Psalm 23. Uh, pick it up in verse 1. We'll, we'll just recap what we have uh, uh, already been looking at. And uh, the Bible says, the Lord's my shepherd. Uh, I have everything that I'll ever need. That's literally what the Hebrew says. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes me. He renews me. In verse 3, he restores my soul. He leads me. Here's our text for this morning. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, I know that many of you would probably say, you know what, Pastor, I've tried this stuff of uh, letting the Lord lead me and guide me, and I, and I just really don't get it. Well, let me say to you, God's will for your life is not lost. Uh, you don't have to go searching for it, digging for it, scratching for it. He's your heavenly Father. And it's his responsibility that he laid on himself to make his will known to you clear, plain, and unmistakably. That's what he's going to do. So his will's not lost. He'll make it clear to you just like a father and a mother do to their children. They don't make them second guess or guess what in the world's going on. They tell them, here's the direction that I want you to go in. Here's the direction I don't want you to go in. Here are the decisions that you need to make, da 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 da, da. God is the same with us. He wants us to know. That's why he said he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And you say, well, how does he do that? Well, several ways, but first way is right here, the word of God. And then 
he gives us a conscience. And then uh, in addition to all of that, there is the Holy Spirit that guides us in the paths of righteousness. Now, one of the beauty things that I've been trying to hammer in for these last few weeks is that this is not a death psalm. This is not a psalm that is really applied to just those seasons of times in our lives when we're experiencing death. And we get it, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And we've just taken that completely out of the context and we've just applied it now, although it's very good and it works and, and, and we've used it effectively all of these years. It's really more about life and it's really more about how God wants to guide you and direct you in the midst of the life that you are living. Now, understand something. Uh, the theme of this whole psalm that we have been talking about is the goodness of God. And God is good, but he's more than that. He is our God. He's not only to feed us, he's going to lead us. Now, I want to cause you to think just a minute, and I hope you will. Um, one of the proofs if you're listening, say amen. amen. One of the proofs that you have been saved by the grace of God is the fact that God leads your life. Now that's not my opinion. That's the word of God. God says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, he says only those people who are led by God's spirit are God's children. So if you're not being led by the Spirit of God, if you've never experienced the leadership of the Holy Spirit, if he's never been your guide, in all probability, friend, you've never been saved. That's God's word. So let me just say to you, this lesson this morning is extremely important. Uh, I'm not sure it's not the most important that we have uh, been given and taught in all of these weeks. Life is filled with all kinds of crossroads. There's stop signs and yield signs and red lights and green lights all through your life. And so you really need to come to the place that you have the confident assurance that once you reach those times in your life that God's Holy Spirit is going to guide you through them and lead you in the right direction. Now, uh, today's lesson is really two points, all right, in talking about and discovering the will of God, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, first of all, there are some traps to avoid. Some traps to avoid if you're going to experience the leadership of God. Now, let me give you five of those traps real quickly. You ready? Some quicker than others. Culture cannot be your guide. Culture cannot be your guide. You understand, you can't follow the culture in which we are living in today and follow the Holy Spirit of God at the same time. The Bible says to be double-minded. Uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. That word unstable there is really a graphic de description of a man who is inebriated, a man who's drunk and he's staggering around and he's unstable. The Bible says you can't follow the culture and the Holy Spirit uh, at the same time. They are mutually exclusive. Some, listen, you, 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 you simply because everybody else is doing it, really that's no excuse for you doing it. Simply because something is politically correct doesn't make it moral. Uh, just to fit in, so many people are living their life. I, I don't want to, you know, I want to be like everybody else. I don't want to be different. I, I, I want to fit in. I want to do like uh, the Romans do when in Rome. You, you know, one, one of the things that just really, my wife will tell you, I love to go to the grocery store. <laughs> That's one of those little fact things that you may not know about your pastor, but um, the, the manager of the grocery store that I go to is a member of this church. And uh, man, I, we, we, just, we, have, 
we just get just this week got a big conversation there and just enjoyed fellowship. I'll, I'll go two or three times a day. Won't bother me a bit. Love going to the grocery store. The, 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 the thing that I really don't like about going to the grocery store is the checkout line and having to go buy all of those magazines that are over there that tell me that I can't wear this at the particular time. I can't wear white after Labor Day. It's not acceptable. Or I can't look like this anymore because that's out. But if I'm going to fit in, i got to look like this. And this kind of peer pressure from our culture is all around us. I I just uh, don't like that. You, You understand the culture is going in the opposite direction of where God intends for us to go. Israel did the same thing. And and, and God said to Israel, I don't want you to be like everybody else around. I want you to be different. And so he gave them ceremonial laws. He gave them civil laws. He he gave them uh, 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 some some, uh, uh, moral laws that they were to abide by simply because he said, I don't want you culturally living like everybody else in the world is living. And so what's happening today is that there are too many people accepting the world's standard for life. Now, let me tell you what God's word says. In Romans chapter 12, it's one of those scripture passages most of the people in this room have already memorized. In chapter 12 and verse 2, the Bible says, be not conformed to the culture that is around you, to this world, but be transformed, be different, come out from them. How? By the renewing of your minds. So so in other words, if, if I'm going to be different from the culture and I am going to follow the precepts and the principles laid out in the word of God and be led by the Holy Spirit of God, one of the traps that I can't fall into is following culture. I, I've got to be different How do I be different? I change my way of thinking. The renewing of our mind. I have to think differently than the world thinks if the Spirit of God is going to lead me uh, in my life. So many people today don't do that and they get wrapped up into the world's system of things. Romans 12, 2 goes on to say, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is the good and perfect and acceptable will of God. (laughs) I got to renew my thinking. I can't think like the world if I'm going to live out perfectly what God wants me in my heart and in my life. Okay, let me me quickly go on. Uh, Culture can't guide me. Companions can't guide me. Don't fall into the trap of companions guiding you. Now, don't mean to be mean. Don't mean to be ugly. I love you with all of my heart, and that's the reason that I'm going to tell you what I'm telling you, because there's some of you that are sitting under the sound of my voice right now, whether you're here or watching TV or live stream. Some of you here today need to change your friends. You need to let go of some of the friends that you have Why? Because you're no longer influencing them. They're influencing you. Now, don't you hear me say something that I'm not saying. I am not saying that Christian people ought not to have lost friends or unchristian friends. Uh, If we're going to change our world, you better be in the business of having some lost friends in your life. But if they're influencing you instead of you influencing them, you need to change friends so that you can make an impact For Jesus, Uh, peer pressure causes so many people to miss God. They'll come along and, you know, go ahead. One drink's not going to hurt you. Man, this is a new one that just came out on the market. and, 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 And they'll influence you in the wrong way. By the way, parents, here's something that I, I don't care what the other kids are doing with their video games. Uh, don't let peer pressure cause you to go down to the video store and buy some M-rated video game to give to your 12-year-old. 
There's all, we've heard all kinds of stuff about pollution, water pollution and air pollution that was all in the news even this week. But I want to tell you, there's something a whole lot worse, and that's mind pollution. When we're putting things in our kids' minds that ought not to be there because somebody else is doing it. I used to use this in a lot of sermons. I, I, I kind of still like it today. You're either a thermostat or you're a thermometer. A thermometer is not going to do anything but register the conditions. A thermostat is going to regulate those conditions. You ought to be a thermostat Christian. Some of you need to change your friends. I, one thing here I, that I came across this week I thought was really interesting. And it's a comparison of 1 John 3 and John 3.16. 1 John 3 says, Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. For if a man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. What's the difference? Does that, is that not contradictory in some sense, Pastor? No, it's not contradictory at all. Now, it's the same writer, the same author, same one who wrote the Gospel of John, also wrote 1 John. So is he contradicting himself? Absolutely not. In 1 John, when he says, love not the world, he's talking about the world's system of things and the world's value system. In John 3, 16, Jesus loves people. I'm going to tell you what's happening in 2020. We've got it backwards. We're loving the world's value system and hating people when God said we ought to be loving people and hating the world's system. Be careful of your companions. It's a trap. Let me tell you another trap that hinders you and keeps you from being led by the Spirit of God, and it's counterfeits. Counterfeits. You, you know, I was talking to my son just recently, and I cautioned him in, in this area here. We were just having a great discussion. I always enjoy uh, our discussions together, and uh, I, I was just talking about how that Satan oftentimes counterfeits what God puts out. And a lot of people are following counterfeits, rather than the real thing. Let me just tell you, right here is the directions, okay? God has written them down in a book. And I'm always amazed, it's mind-boggling to me, how that Christian people oftentimes will go to God in prayer and seeking God's guidance and directions, and the next morning they want to pick up the paper and read the horoscope to see what God's doing. Help us. They're mutually exclusive. You, you can't have it uh, both ways. It's a substitute. Do you know what the Roman Empire, let me give you a couple of things historically. In, in the Roman Empire, do you know how oftentimes they found uh, directions in their life? They would sacrifice an animal and they would cut that animal open and they would take out the liver in the Roman Empire and they would have certain people that had the quote-unquote gift to be able to look and interpret the future by looking at the liver of an animal. Well, should we do, well, the liver says, no, you ought not to do that. <laughs> Another means would be the quiver of arrows. Ezekiel 21, maybe. Um, Ezekiel talks about it a little bit, that they would take the arrows that were in the quiver and they would just dump them out and uh, somebody would come along, some specialized person would come along and they would interpret the configuration of how the arrows fell out on the ground to determine whether or not they would go to battle. You'd think, preacher, that's the dumbest stuff that I've ever heard in all my born days. Well, let me tell you about the 21st century. We, we, we've got one dumber than both of those put together. It's called rumpology. You ever heard of rumpology? I hadn't either until this week. Rumpology says that... Uh, <laughs> 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 
there are certain rumpologists who are able to look at a person's butt to determine their past and their future. A little dimple here and a little crevice here and that. Telling the truth, I'm not lying. Go look it up, Google it. Pick out your phone, Google it. Help us. Wonder what they're saying about November the 3rd. I have no idea. Counterfeits. <laughs> you never know around here. So you, you, you're going to dial up the psychic hotlines, the 900 numbers to determine what you're going to do with your life. It's nothing in the world but a counterfeit, and I can prove it because the first thing you got to do before you get your message is that you've got to give them a credit card number. Counterfeits. Then don't let circumstances rob you of the opportunity to hear from God. So many people that we know today are living their lives based on their circumstances. Well, I got into heavy traffic and I missed my airplane over. It must have been the will of God for me not to go where I was supposed to go. Uh, uh, you know what? The ushers didn't pass the plate down my row, so it must have been the will of God for me not to tithe this Sunday. Circumstantial. Jonah was like that. Uh, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to preach against that great city. We, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to do a great thing in that town, and I want to use you. And Jonah said, no way, Jose. And he goes down to Tarshish, gets on a ship there, shows up at Tarshish, on, uh, uh, to Joppa, on his way to Tarshish, which was on the coast of Spain. He gets down to Joppa. He's got his money. And lo and behold, there is a, a, a ship to take you exactly where he wants to go. He purchases his ticket. They have a place. Must be God's will. Circumstantial. Paul, going to be imprisoned in Rome. He's on his way to Rome. God shows up and a dream with Paul. Hey, Paul, just going to tell you, buddy, y'all better not use that boat tomorrow. That, that boat's headed into a storm. And if you sail during this time of year in those stormy seas, you're not only going to lose all the cargo, you're going to lose all the ship. Next day, Paul tells the captain, hey, Cap, God told me you, you, we, we're not supposed to go. We're going to sail into a bad storm. You're going to lose your cargo and going to lose your ship. Acts 27, the Bible says that about that time, there was a gentle breeze that began to blow. And the captain looked at the circumstances and said, wow, this must be God getting us ready to go. We, this is great. This is what we've been looking for. Here's a sign. Let's get on this. And he sailed in that gentle breeze dead into a storm that nearly cost him his life. I wonder how many of you are sitting here this morning had some gentle breeze blow over your life and instead of checking it out in the word of God and seeking God about it, you went, well, well, my, 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 this must be of God. This is so good. This got to be of God. And before you knew it, based on the gentle breeze rather than the leadership of the Holy Spirit, you made a decision that plummeted your life into a storm. Can I, can I just say, listen, because some of you are looking at some open doors in your life right now. You better be careful of an open door. It may be a trap door. Every open door is not of God. Be careful of the circumstances. Satan can absolutely manipulate the circumstances and you need to test them and check them out against the word of God. Let me give you another one real quickly. You can't let your condition be your God. What do you mean by condition? Well, there are just certain conditions in our life. We are elated at times. 
We're depressed at times. We are discouraged at times. Here's the deal. Your feelings will come and go. Your condition will come and go. Uh, you, you can't go by how you feel. You can't go by your conditions because they're not going to remain the same. We've heard that statement about let your conscience be your God. No, don't let your conscience be your God. Your, your conscience can be wrong as well. The Bible says that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. And who can know it? I've, had, I've, I've literally asked this a number of times. Why in the world did you do that? Well, preacher, I just had such peace about it. I just felt good about it. Had peace. It wasn't peace. You just ate a bad piece of pizza. That's all in the world that that was. You just had that peaceful, easy feeling. Some of you giggled at that because you're in my generation and you knew exactly where that came from. Can I just say to you, there's a whole lot more to making a decision about the future of your life than going by how you feel at that moment. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, listen to this. You may feel you're on the right road and end up dead. Isaiah 53, we've used it passage two or three times already. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, how we felt that we ought to go. There's some traps to avoid. Be careful of those traps. But now, there's also some tasks to accomplish. There's traps to avoid, and there are tasks to accomplish if you're going to be who God wants you to be. You ready? Here we go. Number one, decide now that you want God to lead your life. Remember, this is a choice. It's a decision that you're going to make. So decide right now that you're going to follow the will of God. You want the will of God. Decide now you want the will of God. Paul, uh, uh, David said it beautifully in Psalm 40 and verse 8. He says, I delight to do your will, O God. Let, let me give you a picture of what that looks like. Um, how many of you have ever uh, struggled to breathe? Uh, maybe you were underwater, somebody was playing around with you. You know, I went with kids that push us underwater and hold us under there, and you just, boy, if I could just get one breath, I just need one breath. How many of you have ever been that way? I, I went down to uh, visit my mom. I called up the uh, assisted living. I said, I, I want to I see my mother. She couldn't come to the window like we've been doing for the last seven months. And I just said, I want to see my mother. So they put all this garb on me and I masked up and gloved up and I went into her room and there she was this week and she could not get a good breath to save her life. The congestive heart failure was working and her lungs were filled up with fluid and she was just, she said, I just can't breathe if I could just get a good breath. Have you ever been there? That's the picture that David is pointing, that you want the will of God so desperately. If I could just get the will of God, I could breathe. Do you want God's will for your life that much? You gotta get to that place. I want that more than anything else. So you decide that you want to be led by the Spirit of God. Second, you've got to determine to obey God. Now, I want you to listen very carefully to this next part. That next part. You've got to determine that you will obey the Word of God. P picture, you, you get a, a blank piece of paper and you sign it at the bottom and you hand it to God and you say, God, fill it in and no matter what you fill in, that's what I'm going to do. I will obey you. Here's the deal. You predetermine to obey God before he ever gives you the instructions. The way God works is not like this. He doesn't tell you what you are supposed to do for you to sit and think, okay, um, let me decide whether or not I'm going to do this or not. If I do it, then if I don't do it, then I'm going to 
No. You've got to ahead of time determine no matter what it is, God, that's what I am going to do. John chapter 7 verse 17, the Bible says, anyone who wants to do the will of God will know whether my teaching is from God or is merely my own. Let, let me just tell you, God's not going to tell you ahead of time what he wants you to do until you determine that you're going to do it. Let me give you number three. You ready? Be directed by the word of God. Psalm 119, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hear me, God's will is recorded in God's book. When you open up this book, you have opened up the mouth of God. When you have shut this book, you have shut the mouth of God. His will for you is written down right here. And it's time that we stop listening for voices and stop and start looking for verses. Many of it, I've heard it said about all my life. Well, if God would just write it in the sky, ladies and gentlemen, he's not going to write it in the sky when he's already written it in the book. He's not going to show you something new to do until you start doing what he's already told you to do. Let me give you the next one, okay? And, and it's almost redundant, but it is a little bit different. And it is desire that the Holy Spirit guide you. Matthew, got a word here, good word. It's great to have the word of God in our hearts, but it's wonderful to hear the author of the book whispering in our ear. So I was in a meeting in Mexico on Sunday. We had session Monday, session Tuesday, got word that my son-in-law's mother had passed and we had to leave. I got another session in Wednesday morning. <clears throat> and so we flew Wednesday afternoon, got home late Wednesday night, I am to do the funeral Thursday around lunchtime. I have a 125 mile trip to make. And, and, and so I'm just gonna tell you, there was hardly any time or energy to, to, to work up a new funeral message. So I'm, I prayed when I went to bed, I prayed all morning going down the road. I said, Lord, just, you know, I'm gonna get up there but God, I'm going to depend on you. And I want you to help me. And I'm going to tell you, when I stood behind that pulpit, Ken, you've been there numerous times. You, you preachers know exactly what I'm talking about. The Holy Spirit of God began to pour into me and through me unbelievably. You know what it was? It was the reminders of what he had already put in my heart a long time ago. Amen. It's great to have the voice of the author speaking into you at your point of need. When you get to those crossroads, you've got to make those decisions. You need the Spirit of God to help you with it. Number four. Five, I don't know. Discipline yourself to wait on his answer. Discipline yourself to wait on his answer. Here's what I mean by that. Here's what we oftentimes do. Oh, Heavenly Father, you know, I got this big thing I got to decide about and, and God, I just pray that you'd just help me and, and, and lead me and guide me. In Jesus' name, thank you, amen. Oh, got to go to work. Got to go to school. I, I got to go here, got to do this. I'm just going to tell you, friend, if you're really going to be led by the Spirit of God, you can't do all the talking. There needs to be a time, a designated, set-aside time every day of your life when you just sit and shut up and just listen to God and don't do all the talking. Um, 
there's a great verse I want to give you, and it's in Psalm 77. Came across just recently, and it's verse 19. He says, thy way is the sea, and thy path in the great waters, and thy footsteps are not known. That, that's referring back to when Moses led the nation of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. Now, 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 now see this. Mo Moses got them out there. Big mountain on one side. The, the, the body of water in front of them. And here comes Pharaoh's army. And, and Moses thinking, can't, can't deal with the mountain. And, and, and here's the Red Sea. Can't deal with that. And Pharaoh's army, we're in a mess. We're trapped. We're sunk. Don't know what I'm going to do. Don't know which direction to go. Can't go that way. Can't go that way. You certainly can't go that way. What am I going to do? You know where he was? He was at a place called Baal Shazan. You know what Baal Shazan means? A place of hidden treasure. Before they knew it, the waters opened up and they passed on dry ground in a path that they didn't see when they first got there. It wasn't there. It was unseen, a pathway unknown to everybody around them. And I suspect that there are a whole bunch of people in this room right now. You're at Baal Zavon. You're, you're, your back's up against the wall. You don't know whether to sign the divorce papers or not. You just came from the doctor and a big old C word was there that has scared you to death. Some of you are faced with a professional decision that could alter and change the rest of your life and you don't know whether to accept it or not. You, you, you've got a marital situation right now that you're confronted with and you thought I never would be here. May I say to you, <laughs> you're at Baal Zephon. You're at a place of hidden treasure. And if you will go before God and seek his face, he will show you a pathway out of that that you've never known about before. So what are you going to do? He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Some of you have got some traps that you need to avoid. The culture, your companions, your circumstances, your condition. You've you got all kinds of things going on that you just really need to turn away from. And then you've got some things that you need to, you, you need to turn to. You need to decide today, you know, God, I want to be led by your Holy Spirit you got to decide today, God, I don't care what it is that you want from me and to do in me and through me. God, I am a blank piece of paper. Here's my signature. Whatever it is you want to do, God, go ahead and do it. And just trust him. Decide right now. I'm here. And I'll do it. I'll do it. Whatever it is. And let God work through your life. Because I'll tell you, there have been a, I don't know how many, but I could stand here probably for the rest of the day and talk to you about all of the times that I had a Red Sea and a mountain and an army behind me and I'm wondering, God, what in the world am I going to do? I don't see any way out of this. I, I, I don't see any solutions. What am I going to do? And I promise you, 
just prostrated myself before a holy God and said, God, I don't care what it is. You just tell me, I'll do it. And God showed me a pathway that I never knew about before. All through my life. And he'll do the same for you. Thank you for watching Decision for Life. Our location, life group, and program information are available online at fpcit.org. We hope you will take the opportunity to join us in person. Thank you from the family of First Baptist Church Indian Trail.